Hello everybody, uh, reaching out to you and touching base with you. Today I'm going to discuss the power of the Dell 720 XD platform, go over some of its, its, its subcomponents on how you can use these 24 bay arrays to transform other hard drive standards such as SAS, SATA and so on and make them part of your deployment and that includes actually NetApp hard drives. There they are. It's the 450 series and then all right over here is a 600s. I'm sorry that's still a 450 but point taking is I've got 600s here and I've got 450s in here as well. And the nice thing about these configurations is how flexible they are. So today this is a Windows 2019 chassis, fully specced, configured, and operational. And it is going to be used as a transitional chassis because I have another DX over on the other side. And um, basically the headache that I have to do is to free up one of these chassis so I can flash firm using Linux and um, some additional resources to prep more NetApp hard drives so that I can convert them over. But so what I did here is I made this platform, as you can see, a very large, um, basically a five terabyte allocation to absorb all of the storage here off of the second Dell 720 XD chassis, which is sitting right here and as you can see I've got a failing drive on the platform giving me my indication alerts and so on and that drive has caused the performance of the array because it's part of the boot sequence to really slow down even though it has a 10 gig connection the fault of free NAS uh, a challenge with it I should say is that its inheritance recovery is not that great um, and though this has free NAS on it and has served well for about a year, I've decided that uh, I'm not going to use free storage NFS style and ZFS style platforms because of the inconsistencies that I see between uh, the ways the transfer rates are working. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this guy out and I'm going to clean him completely off. Uh, I moved all the data over to here. I'm going to do an integrity check on its mapping for DIMMs to make sure that it's doing okay there as well. And then I will make the decision of what new footprint I'm going to put these Dells into. I think what I'm definitely going to do is keep this one as a server, as a 2019 server for Microsoft. But I make make the other one a true native Linux NFS array. Uh, down the road for some additional um, styles of uh, adaptive block storage configurations. It's something a little bit more genuinely stable than, you know, the ZFS platforms have showed me as of late. Uh, I still have, as you can see, the SAS array platform environment, right, just right here, along with the eSATA archivers up here, which are the iStock platforms. Uh, those hold direct access storage for all of my needs and the archiver station which is one of the DX's I'm sorry it was one of the XD's will be my failback uh, so you should always have two sources of your data as backup and that's what we're going to do here so uh, I'm going to pause out the phone and pull that chassis out real quick stand by so as you can see here, I've removed the 720XD and I've placed it here on top of the first uh, XD platform, which is the 2019 server. And this guy is a large scale scaler, disk scaler, 24 disks. And I figured, well, let's take a look here real quick. Um, you could take a look, look at its interior. Now, remember the driving force for here is to use best practices for converting NAS style resources like these 2324 series uh, disks, which are coming out of a NetApp, reformatting them back into the 512 sector format with firmware flash, 
as well being completed and then their best practice ready to go. But it is a process. So as you can see here, I've got my SAS split setups here for the 24 bay bus. And that's important because your 24 bays are broken up in three channels, which means as you're putting disks into the equation, you've got three channels here and a th another channel right here for these two disks in the back. And then of course, you've got your RAID controller, which is sitting right here, that which is able to support all of these disks. So this tells you that the fastest bus you've got here today is these two in the back, because there's only two for a single SAS bus. That's important because these would be probably the best boot drives you would want to use uh, to get the scalable performance you want, may it be SSD or other. Now, it's important that you flash everything up to date, uh, but remember, there are some tricks in that regard. When you're flashing these hard drives, and you're also re, uh, you're, you're detecting them, because some RAID controllers to protect the, the environment will not let you acknowledge these disks, so you have to make sure that either an HBA or a RAID controller is f uh, firmware clear, uh, and you'll find that HPs are not, but I have found that Dells are. So I can basically get this hard drive up to spec, reformat it as a 512, as a standalone disk, and then present it to any machine out there, including a standard PC. It's just like any other hard drive. Uh, here I have a challenge as well, is because I've got a, a RAM challenge that one of these bus cards are not working. Of course, these are recycles, um, so you know this does happen. But you can pair your RAM into ECC failover states. And uh, because memory is getting pretty cheap, there's 100 plus gigs here um, that are present, as you can see from over here. And then you can see continuing, continuing, continuing. Like I said, there's lots of memory here. So you can rotate that and cycle those kind of challenges out of the equation so that your motherboard isn't working in good shape. Now, another thing you need to take notice, well, since we've got this open, is if you look in the back, you have right here, if you look right here, sorry, you've got 10 gigs and 2 gigs, not the 4 as you see down here that are just strictly 4. These are GBIX, and you can already see a fiber GBIX sitting there. It's a 10 gig NIC uh, configuration. So this setup is a much more powerful machine than the brother that is below it. So that's important. That's why this machine was doing a lot of the work earlier in the equation. I just have to decide how I want to handle this card going forward. I'm debating if I go ahead and just set up a uh, configuration where I can get the 10 gig, maybe in server 2019, I'm not sure yet. And as you can see here, I've added USB 3.0 card in here for a very high speed transfer rates. Very good when you're dealing with an archiver setup. Archivers would include some type of paired disks set arrays, which are always constantly staying cool, and you know they're eSATA based, so that's not a problem where they can do USB 3.0 or higher. But uh, to do that, obviously, I have to mount and configure the USB 3.0 in here at post OS level usage. So by showing you this, you're seeing the beast as it is. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to begin the process of shutting down this machine the one below so I can use its outputs and uh, basically set the system up and connect and start the process of working with the RAID controllers. So stand by. Okay, so now what I've done is I've powered this unit up and I cleared all of these static drives here that you see today. And then over here, I have cleared the back ones, but I'm gonna pull these back ones out completely because um, I'm going to exchange those with more prominent disks that are higher capacity, 450 gigs each, and I want those to be my boot disk along with my 100 meg, and it should be, I believe, this one right here, yeah, here it is, my 100 meg SSD drive. So that's all I want. So all these other disks are perfectly good disks, but they're of no value to me right now because of the nature of how they are installed. So what I'm going to do next 
is once I get this to lock, for some crazy reason it won't lock. Huh, I'll have to check that out. But anyways, um, I'm going to remove all of these discs, put them on the top, process these NetApp discs down here on the Windows 2019 chassis. And the reason why this, one, this chassis won't initiate these is because they are running still temporarily on the Google uh, post bias state that seemed for one reason or another to prevent other main uh, VARs drives from functioning. But this guy up here, he's a Dell machine. Dell bias, Dell motherboard, everything. So that's how I get past that problem. So in part two of this video, you'll see how the disks are prepped in a RAID environment to come to life and to be ready to be usable uh, going forward by formatting them into the 512 autonomously through the RAID controller. That's much better than going through a Linux environment. Now, it's, that's my strategy. That's what I want to accomplish here is to boot off these disks, clean them up, put them into use, keep them going, and so on. Now, be careful. If you want to throw in an SSD boot drive, you have to be careful on that front because when you do, um, you have to make sure the BIOS uh, inf uh, image CD is installed and so that it can do its part and run in regards to uh, being firmware compliant for the different requirements that are out there. Oh, this does not like that, does it? So anyways, I'm just pointing that out to you. I might separate those in general, but anyways, uh, so in part two, you're going to see on the screen how I use the RAID controller to deassociate the value of the hard drives and then start to use them as basic hard drives. That's it for now. Thanks. Bye.